Welcome back here. This is Silicon Valley coverage of Hadoop Summit. Um, I'm John Furrier, the founder. We're, we're pleased to have a friend inside the cube. It's uh, rare to have uh, such luminaries. Uh, Amr Awadallah, good friend, and also co-founder of Cloudera, really the pioneer in the space that helped build this industry that we're living here at, at uh, Hadoop Summit. Uh, I'm with Dave Vellante from Wikibon.org. Amr, welcome back to the cube, Cube oh, alumni. Thank you. thank you for um, having me here. Wow, what a journey. Uh, yep. You co-founded uh, Cloudera. I remember when you were in stealth mode, you know, I really can't talk about it. And, uh, and then, of course, the history of SiliconANGLE being uh, you know, uh, founded and kind of built Mm -hmm. in, in your office yep. when you only had like 20 some of the employees. Yep. Uh, we owe a great deal of gratitude to you and, and congratulations to you, Mike Olson, and the team for building uh, an industry. So I just want to say you. thank you and welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, it was great to be here. So what do you think? Uh, what's your take on uh, the current uh, Hadoop ecosystem right now? I mean, obviously a lot's happened. I mean, it's big now, it's growing up fast. Yeah. Um, the word enterprise grade is out there. You're seeing it move from you know, trying to change the world. Our first interview, you said, I've seen the future, I want to bring it to the mainstream. It's here, it's yeah. hitting mainstream right now. Yeah. What's your take of the current situation of the ecosystem and, it, and its value? Yeah, so uh, I, I have a quick question first. Should I look to you or look to the camera? Look to the camera, <laughs> or both, whatever, you, whatever you'd like. <laughs> so uh, I think it's, the ecosystem is definitely growing, which is very, very healthy. However, there is a uh, side question there, which is what do you think of the, all the competition coming into the space? So five years ago when Cloudera was started, it was just Cloudera. There was no other commercial vendor um, uh, trying to support or enable Hadoop in the, in the industry for enterprises. And uh, today, there's at least 10 of them uh, trying to compete with us, right? And that includes big companies, established companies that decided, hey, we're going to start uh, uh, addressing the space, but includes many, many newcomers who, uh, like Hortonworks, who were founded over the last couple of years. Uh, that's a healthy thing. I mean, that's absolutely a sign of a growing market. If the market wasn't growing, if there wasn't money in the market, if there, there wasn't, if it was just hype, there wouldn't have been all of these new uh, companies and new ventures uh, showing up. Uh, that said, I never look at competition as something that worries me that I'm afraid now all what's going to happen to me. Or that's normal. That's exactly what happens to successful companies. If you look at Red Hat, when Red Hat was launching with uh, Linux, they had 25 competitors or even more, 30 competitors. That's when Red Hat was forming out. And today, even of these 25, 30 competitors, they still have six or seven still left. So I think it's a very, very healthy sign of the growth of this market and the maturity that's reaching. What do you think about some of the, um, the white spaces that are evolving? You guys have obviously been involved in a lot of deployments at Cloudera. Again, you're doing a lot of, a lot of work with the top, top names and the, the clients please, that you have aren't please, usually please, disclosed because you really can't disclose them. Um, what, like what are you seeing right now as the white spaces for uh, things to do uh, in the Hadoop platform? It's a very, very good question. So uh, first I can't really talk about future, future roadmap <laughs> right now. We, we're becoming a big company at that uh, level where we can't comment on future roadmaps. Ah, uh, that's a sign, that's a sign of the time. <laughs> <laughs> you're well, you're media trained. Good to see you there, <laughs> doing a good job, keeping you. Uh, if you want more information on that, I can connect you with the PR team. No, okay, no, 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 please, please, no, 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 no. We're good, <laughs> we're good. We'll get it out of you. But, <laughs> but our vision, our vision for Cloudera from day one, like you were saying, earlier, we saw the future, right? So our vision from, from day one was really to build this data system where you can have data of any type, whether that data is structured or unstructured or images, it doesn't matter. And then on top of that data, run any type of workloads. That workload could be the initial genesis of Hadoop, which is MapReduce, which is batch processing. But now, as, as we made many announcements through the last uh, few years, we also now have Impala for interactive analytics as a workload. We have a very, very strong partner partnership with SAS for doing uh, machine learning and statistics as a workload. And uh, a few weeks ago, we announced search as another workload. So you have multiple types of workloads that can handle different types of uh, uh, problems that you have within your or organization and bring all of these workloads to all of your data, regardless of type. And that's the vision that we'll continue to deliver on. That's exactly what we're building going into the future. So how's that fit in with Yarn, right? We're hearing a lot at this conference about Yarn, um, the ability to you know, do more with less and a lot of the things that you typically hear with the within the enterprise. And, yes. and so talk about that a little bit. Yarn is a very core part to our platform. Uh, in fact, Yarn has been part of CDH4 for more than a year now out in the, in the markets. So we did bring, we were one of the, we, I think we were the first vendor who brought Yarn into a distribution. 
uh, of Hadoop out there. Uh, it's very, very fundamental to us because that's how we're going to coordinate. We're going to be using Yarn to coordinate launching all of these different type of workloads. You're going to have the MapReduce workload, which is very batch oriented, the Impala workload, which is very latency sensitive, the, the search workload, which is also very latency sensitive, the machine learning workload, which is more uh, batch oriented, et cetera, et cetera. And Yarn is a very central piece to helping us coordinate all of these different types of workloads onto the platform. Cloudera has been a great citizen in the community. Also, you, you mentioned, and, and we witnessed that uh, your team create the industry. You guys were there. You took the chance. You were the first ones commercially funded by the venture capitalists, you know, and then others will follow, and obviously, uh, huge ecosystem here. Yes. A lot of noise, a lot of people trying to get attention. So I have to ask you, because I want you to address this, because I know it's been talked about in some of the other blogs, is there's a lot of FUD going on around who's doing what, uh, who's <laughs> doing what. And in some cases, maybe flat out you know, misinformation, and that happens in a growing market. Mm -hmm. you know, get, elbows get sharp. Yes. So I want you to you know, share with the audience Anything that you want to say about the FUD, around what people say about Cloudera, or about others, or what you're doing, just to clarify, because there has been, I mean, I've gotten back channel information around, you know, not sure the committer is this, and it's been, it's been well documented, there's a lot of FUD out there. What, what would you say to the folks out there yes. to clarify that? I, I would say that our focus should be to continue to work as a community to push the platform forward. Uh, I would say that at Cloudera, we do a lot of contributions. Hortonworks definitely is one of the top contributors out there as well, I'll acknowledge that. Uh, so is many, many, many other companies. And we want to continue to see the platform evolve. I would stress though that at Cloudera, we do have a number of the original project founders working at the company. So it's not just the, the contribution that we bring, but the fact that we have the founders of these projects working at uh, Cloudera. And some of these projects actually were created at Cloudera from day one, as opposed to um, created in some other company and then you hire the employee and they work for you. So I gave you both examples from Cloudera. Uh, Doug Cutting, uh, he is the creator of Hadoop. Uh, Doc Cutting is also the creator of uh, Lucene, which became Solar, which is part of the search project that we uh, launched recently. Uh, Doc Cutting wasn't with Cloudera from day one, right? So, so when he created these technologies, he actually was at Yahoo, for example, when he created Hadoop, he was at Yahoo, wasn't at uh, Cloudera. However, he now works for Cloudera. So we get that because now uh, Doc Cutting works for Cloudera. So that's one example. Uh, on the flip side, there is projects like Flume and Scoop that are now part of every single distribution out there. And Flume and Scoop were both created at Cloudera. They were actually created inside of Cloudera. Yeah. So uh, the key point is, and, and that's what I would like all of the vendors out there uh, that are trying to uh, leverage Hadoop and get benefit about out Hadoop, is please don't be just takers. There are some vendors out there who are just takers. Just want to take from the open source, take from the open source, and don't give back. Right? I'm not going to name them, uh, but there is a few of them out there. Please, please, please. I mean, that, that, that is very, very a selfish behavior. It's not going to help the ecosystem in the long term. We would like to see you both take and give at the same time. So that would be my core message. And that's, for example, like I thank Hortonworks because that's exactly what Hortonworks is doing. They're both giving and taking at the same and time. You guys have always been clear on that. Nobody, I mean, your contribution to open source has been well documented. And there's, no, there's no question about that. John and I have talked about it a lot. That's, and you guys helped get it all started. And even Hammerbacher, when we had him on a couple years ago, when Hortonworks came into the market, said, hey, the more people working on open source, the better. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, it's always been your posture. You're not playing games there. Anyways, having said that, you, you, you have a strategy to layer on top of that open source some of your own proprietary code, uh, and so you have choices to make in yes. terms of how you allocate those resources. So, as an engineering manager, how do you allocate those resources in terms of, okay, what do we do for the community, and what do we do for our own you know, future because of the business model that we chose? How do you make those trade-offs? Yes, that's a very, very good question. So, first it's important to stress that our core platform, CDH, mm -hmm. is open source. Everything we put in the core platform is open source. Uh, so for example, Impala, which we launched very uh, uh, recently as a GA now, uh, we launched uh, beta last year, but now it's GA, is 100% Apache license, 100% open source. Uh, Search, which we announced very recently, is also open source. So the platform itself, we're committing to everything in there to be open source. Now, we believe fundamentally, uh, just from having lots of history in studying the open source uh, markets, from our uh, CEO, Mike Olson himself, being uh, an, one of the very first open source people in the world with, uh, with Sleepy Cat, the company that he sold to Oracle be before founding Cloudera. Uh, from our investors helping many other uh, open source companies. To have a successful open, uh, open source company, you need to have a very good engine between the business model that generates revenue and between the products that you are creating. If you don't have a good feedback loop there between these two, you won't be able to sustain the innovation to continue to push the, the boundaries of how good the product is. So we strongly believe in that. 
if your uh, if your product is literally 100% open source, meaning both the management and everything, there is nothing proprietary whatsoever inside of your uh, products. I can't tell what that is. It's taking a picture. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I thought somebody was waiting for me. <laughs> sorry about that. It's a cube signal. <laughs> I, I thought it was like really a. Good armor. I thought it was like a, ca ca a card of paper <laughs> with some writing. You have a, some writing. You have a, you have a fan. Fans yeah. out there. Okay. <laughs> They're storming the, uh, the the concert here. Okay, that's that's good to hear. That's good to hear. Uh, sorry about that interruption. Good. So, um, uh, if 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 you have everything 100% open source, that uh, creates two problems. First, you have no differentiation whatsoever meaning another big corporation, without naming who the big corporations could be, uh, we just can take everything you do, literally every single bit of source code you have, and say, hey, we can do it too. Come to us, don't work with those guys. Right? We have the latest, greatest things that they have. Why do you want to continue to work with them? So no, no differentiation is number one, which is very dangerous. And number two, when it becomes, if, if it's 100% open source and there's lots of other vendors able to take the, art, the open source artifact and work with it, then it becomes now purely about maintenance and insurance on the products, which is a commodity product, which obviously the prices for that will go down to the ground. And you won't be able to have this, sustain this positive feedback effect between your business model and between your product roadmap. And we won't be able to build a long-lasting company. So that's why we do have a combination of open source artifacts and uh, proprietary artifacts. Now our prop proprietary arf artifacts is always around the management of the system, right? So how do we manage the security of the system? How do we manage the, the data flow within the system? How do we manage the services inside the, of the system across all layers, right? Not just the Hadoop layer, but the edge-based layer, the Zookeeper layer, et cetera, et cetera. So that's where we focus our efforts uh, going forward, and that's how we differentiate ourselves from, our from other vendors out there. Uh, Cloudera Manager, Cloudera Navigator are very unique to us. Nobody else has anything close to those capabilities out there. So it sounds like the contributions you make to open source are cultural of, of in nature, I mean, DNA uh, of sorts, of, right? uh, uh, and so you, that's yes. something that you guys do, because you've always oh, done absolutely. it. And then the, the artifacts that are proprietary are essentially around rationalizing the revenue opportunity with the expense that you're going to apply there and making a business case. And that, that's, how to th that's one, and then yeah. two, the differentiation yeah. from other competitors. So it's these two things, yes. Okay, and so. And we believe that's fundamental to business, to open source business models. Yeah, I mean, there are many open source business models, right? You can go pure service, you can go, like you said, you can coldly bogart the code. <laughs> and there, is and no not give pure, back. there is no pure service open source model uh, company that was able to build a long lasting, surviving public company. Never happened in history. They always get acquired. Because yeah, it mean, becomes a commodity. I mean, right. I mean, uh, I mean I, and even IBM. <laughs> so, Amr, I want to ask you about the storage thing. We were talking before camera, the, um, the Horton versus announcement storage. You, um, what's your take on that? Uh, the Gluster? Which one? The Gluster? Uh, the one with Red Hat. Yes. Yes, so uh, Red Hat, and uh, yeah, there has been some recent news about uh, Red Hat with, uh, with uh, Hortonworks having a version of the Hadoop platform that uses MapReduce for the computation, but uses Red Hat uh, for the storage. Right, so e Red Hat has a new storage offering that was built based off of a company they acquired was called Guster. And that, that news was very, very surprising to me. And it w the reason why it was surprising, is correlated also with a shift in uh, messaging from, from Hortonworks. If you look at Hortonworks last year, at Hadoop Summit last year, uh, one of the key messages that they delivered to us is that within the next uh, five years, or by 2015, the, the, the tagline back then by 2015, and you're doing research right now to see yeah. if I'm doing, saying the right thing. <laughs> by 2015, half the, 15 world's, data the world's data will be, on Hadoop. Will be stored in Hadoop. Yeah, right. Will be stored in Hadoop. Yes. If you look today at the slides, it doesn't say it that. It says within five years, right? No, no, no. It says. Well, that was the second iteration, was so within five now years, and yes, now they say something different. Now say they say within 2015, by, sorry, by 2015, half the world's data will be processed by Hadoop, and instead of stored by Hadoop. And that's a very, very fundamental so shift. So it's a nuance. It's a, it's a, well, it's a but very it's important a big nuance. Well, deal, because yes. when I first saw that, I said, hmm, what does this all mean? And then it sounds, 2015 sounds a little early. Yes. And now you're saying processed by, okay, that's different. Yes, exactly. Right. And, and the reason why now is we believe HDFS is very, very core to the Hadoop platform. HDFS is very core mm -hmm. to Hadoop platform, the storage system of Hadoop. We want to, it's really the layer that made Hadoop what Hadoop is, more than anything else, is how scalable, how reliable, and how economical the HDFS 
storage layer is. So we, we really, I mean, ask Corton Works and ask all the companies working uh, in, the, in the Hadoop community not to fragment at the storage layer. We need the storage for Hadoop to stay inside of Hadoop and not to fragment that out. That's very, very critical. Okay, so, but so you're saying that they're in indicating through the gesture of that, that they're not come out saying we're going to fragment HDFS, but the way that this is positioned might signal. No, 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 the announcement, the announcement with uh, Red Hat is that. Is the direct signal. It's literally, we are you'll be able to run MapReduce directly on top of Red Hat storage instead of HDFS. Okay, so I, I, that's I, a is that a compliance? I interpreted it as they were just, the, uh, you know, Hortonworks was hedging on its prediction, which I said, okay, I'm, I'll give them a break on that. You're saying it's something different. It's a shift in strategy. Potentially. Yeah, which can be dangerous. It's well, a shift in strategy. Is that a, is that a compliance issue? Because, you know, the, the dis on Hadoop is POSIX. Yeah. Like Red Hat does have a lot of enterprise customers. Yes. So is that just maybe if then invest in making Hadoop POSIX compliance, which actually, by the way, we are as a community investing yeah, in that's that. that's a must-have. Yeah, so we are oh. investing in adding POSIX, compli POSIX compliance to Hadoop, we are investing in adding uh, snapshots into Hadoop, which will be coming uh, well, very, very soon over the next Do you think that, that, pick a year, I don't care if it's 2015, 2020, 2000, whenever, that the majority of the world's data will be running in Hadoop? The majority of world's data that has to do with analytics, yes. Okay. So, so there is so, so that much. Is, that is it's a very whole important. The caveat. Yes, right. exactly. Because there is lots of types of data that are not very suitable for Hadoop at all. For example, the data storage for Oracle systems, for Oracle database systems. It, no, you want to store that in an NetApp or an EMC. You don't want to store that in Hadoop. Uh, the, data, the, data, the, the, the data storage for streaming video files, right? For just streaming lots and lots of video files. No, you don't want to store which that in Hadoop. It's a huge proportion of the data. Yeah, which is a huge, time. huge yeah. proportion of data. In fact, so that could overwhelm the data. Yeah, so yeah. the new ones, like I would say, yeah, like yeah, I, yeah. I agree that the half thing, but the half thing within the world of data for the purpose of analysis. Yeah, okay, so yeah. that's, uh, that's <laughs> just to narrow, narrow down the yeah, Okay, but it's a more reasonable. But I, I Which never is still a huge market, by the way. It is, <laughs> yeah, it, it is. Um, yes. Okay, so uh, so what's next for you, Amr? You've, uh, you've, you've gone on this journey, you start this company, you've, you've been tra traveling around like crazy, working with customers. What's the next phase of Amr Awadallah's you know, career? Uh, what do you want to have happen next? I mean, what, do you, what, do you, what excites you? What, do you? what are you working on? Yeah, it's just to continue to grow Cloudera to be the biggest company it can be. I mean, we want to be literally, we want to be uh, one of the very few companies that were able to take an open source model and turn that into a large publicly traded uh, uh, corporation. So you've talked about that. You guys brought a new CEO on, you know, mm -hmm. right? Look at the background of the CEO, and it's yeah. you know, clearly he's got some IPO chops. Yes. So that's, that's an aspiration that you guys have put forth. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you're outward facing now, so, um, you're doing a lot of travel? Yes. So what, 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 if, uh, what have their travels taken? You know, you've been in China, you know, obviously you've got a European office uh, yes, open. We, so we what's going on internationally? G give us uh, some sound bites of uh, what's happening in the field. Yeah, so in, in, in internationally, uh, I mean, Europe definitely is my, our next big focus right now. And we, have, we now have a big operation in Europe and uh, we have an office presence in, in Europe and a big team down there. And it's uh, growing very quickly. I would say Europe is about two years behind the US. And kind of like that's how the, uh, how the growth usually matters, what's happening here. And we, yeah, so we, our, our next big market is Europe. We are looking at China. We don't have a big presence in China right now. Uh, Japan, we have a big presence in Japan. Japan is growing very quickly. So yeah, I mean, we're obviously Canada with the US go, uh, growing very quickly as well. Great to have you on theCUBE. Again, for me personally and, and for, for Dave and I, I want to say thanks to Cloudera for some great support over oh, the absolutely. years. You guys have been Thank fantastic. You. Uh, you know, I'd say it's build a great company. It's so hard to build a company. You guys have done a great job. Um, I got to ask you the final question because <laughs> you did bring that first sound bite, which was, I saw the future. This is back when you guys were just in your B round in, in Palo Alto office, just ramping up, just starting to ramp. What's next? What do you see as around the corner? Obviously, we're on a trajectory right now. A lot of things going to get done, positive compliance. A lot of stuff's going to fill in. The platform's going to get stronger. Yeah. We think that open source will win yeah. um, through all the democratization of open source. What's next? What's, the, what's around the corner that you're watching personally that you're, that's interesting to you, Amr, around where this will take us? Yeah, so what, what's next is having this, having this vision become true, having this future vision uh, that, that you refer to become true, meaning having a single platform that can store all of your data and that can, regardless of the type of that data, and allow you to extract value for different types of workloads, whether that be batch, interactive machine learning, or search, or more. Right? There will be more things that will come to the platform. But how to bring your applications 
all of your data applications, how to bring them to your data and all of your data as opposed to have the data go to them. And what are the landmines out there that you need to avoid yes. and the industry and community needs to avoid to make that a reality? The, the key landmine, it's a, it's a bit technical. The landmine is a bit technical, which is making sure that the YARN vision continues to uh, evolve and that we have the capability to properly have a multi-workload resource management system that allows me to run all of these type of workloads without having them step on each other's toes. That's the key, key step going forward. And of course, playing well together in the sandbox, uh, and as always, competitive competition is good. And again, Hadoop is doing great. Amr Awadallah, co-founder of Cloudera, Inside the Cube. This is Silicon Angle and Wikibon's exclusive coverage of Hadoop Summit here in Silicon Valley. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.